Hello, this is Mike from ZSA, here to take you on a tour through the Ergodox EZ's default layout. Before we start, I just want to clarify that this isn't intended to be the ultimate layout for the Ergodox EZ or anything like that. This is supposed to be a good starting point so you can start getting used to the keyboard, and it'll teach you a few of the keyboard's features. There might be a few things on it that seem silly to you, and you can feel free and change those at any time just by going down to the bottom right and clicking the Modify Layout button. To start the tour, I'm going to go over to the bottom left and click the Play Layout Tour button. And while we're going through the tour, I can progress through by clicking on the Next and Previous buttons or by using the arrow keys on my keyboard. The first thing we'll take a look at here are dual function keys. You can see that the tour is highlighting the Z key here, and that key has two functions on it. This can be a little confusing at first. We sometimes get people writing into us asking why the Z key doesn't feel exactly like what they're used to. And that's because if you tap the key quickly, you'll get a Z key, but if you hold it down, you'll get a control. And this can be handy for sending easy shortcuts in the corner there. If we look over on the other side of the board, you can see that just like on the other side, on the slash key, if you tap it, it sends a slash, but if you hold it down, it's a control key. And the same thing goes for the Windows key on the apostrophe here. If you tap that key, you get an apostrophe, hold it down, and it acts as the Windows or the Command key. Next is Caps Word. We added this to our boards last year, and we think this is a really cool alternative to the traditional Caps Lock key. How it works is after you've pressed Caps Word, the next word that you type on the keyboard will all be capitalized, but after you press space or an arrow key, the keyboard will return to typing normally again. If you prefer a Caps Lock, you can always still add that back though. Next, we'll take a look at Hyper and Meh. These keys are great for system-wide shortcuts, and what Hyper does is it holds down Alt, Control, Shift, and the Windows or Command key all at the same time. This is really useful if you'd like to add a shortcut for a program that you'd like to access system-wide. That way it won't conflict with any other app that you're using at the time. Unfortunately, in some recent versions of Windows, Microsoft has started to use the Hyper key or Alt, Control, Shift, and Windows at the same time for the Office Suite. So instead, you might want to use the Meh key instead. This is Hyper's low key cousin, and it just sends Alt, Control, and Shift at the same time without Command or Win. This can be helpful if you're on a Windows PC and you still would like to send those system-wide shortcuts. Next, we'll move down to the thumb cluster, where you'll find the Alt key on Windows or Linux and the Option key on a Mac. Depending on the size of your hands, these thumb keys might be comfortable to press while you're typing, but they also might not, and that's okay. You can move the Alt key someplace else on your layout if you use it a lot while you're typing. In general, these thumb keys can be a good spot to put things that you want easy access to, but might not use immediately while you're typing in fast bursts. Next, we'll find the layout's backspace keys. We have two of these. One of them is just to the left of the A key, and the other is down in the thumb cluster. We think both of these positions are very comfortable and a lot nicer than stretching your hand on a standard keyboard. After that, we get to the number row. It's up at the top of the keyboard, and you can send the numbers just by pressing the keys down up here. Just like a regular keyboard, you can also hold down the shift key and press these number keys to get symbols. So you can hold down shift and press 1 for an exclamation mark, and hold down shift and press 2 for an at sign. You can also make dedicated symbol keys in Oryx itself, and behind the scenes what these are doing is holding shift and sending that key. Next, let's talk about layers. A layer contains a whole new set of keys that you can access, kind of like when you hold down the shift key on a regular keyboard. There are a few different ways of accessing the different layers. This one here on the Ergodox EZ's backtick key is a momentary or a held layer switch. So when you hold it down, you'll access layer one, but as soon as you let go, you'll be taken back to the base layer again. In the middle of the keyboard, you can find a different kind of layer switch, which is a toggle. You can tap it once and you'll be taken to the layer one until you tap it again, at which point you'll switch back to the base layer again. As for what's in layer one, you'll find symbols, numbers, function keys, and lighting controls, as well as an escape key in a position that might be a bit more familiar to a standard keyboard. Up at the top, you'll see the function keys 1 through 12. You do actually have access up through function key 24 in Oryx if you need them, so you can add those to your layout if you'd like. Over on the right hand side, you'll find a number pad, which is right underneath your right hand without having to move it, and then a bunch of symbols on the left hand side. Oryx's live training can be really helpful here. It has a symbols and numbers practice that can really help with working on the new muscle memory for the number pad 
or for the symbols. I'm a big fan of the number pad here because once you get used to it, it's super comfortable to have that number pad right underneath your hand without having to move it at all. Down in the thumb cluster, you'll find the lighting keys for the Ergodox EZ Shine and Ergodox EZ Glow models. The toggle lighting key just lets you turn the lighting on and off. The switch animation key lets you switch between the preset animations and modes that the keyboard has built in. There's a brightness up key and a brightness down key, as well as a key that lets you shift through the different colors that the lights are able to make. Over here, there are a few preset color keys that lets you change the whole lighting on the board to one set color. You can also do this in Oryx itself. You can set a whole layer's color individually. And on the Ergodox Easy Glow, you can also assign per key colors as well. Now we're back to the base layer again for a minute, just to talk about our layer switch over to layer two. You'll find it on the semicolon key and it's another held switch. So when you hold it down, it will take you over to layer two. On layer two, you'll first find a cluster of mouse keys. These lets you move around the cursor on your machine without having any sort of special accessibility setting active. It can be a little clunky, so it's not a full on mouse replacement, but it can be handy in a pinch. Over on the right hand side of layer two, you'll find some media keys. So there's a play pause key, forward and back track keys, as well as some volume controls. And these are all within easy reach of the layer two switch so that you can cord from your ring finger over to your pinky finger for play pause, or from your ring finger over to your middle finger for a previous or next track. In layer two's top right corner, you'll find the reset key, which allows you to put the keyboard into bootloader mode where it's ready to flash a new layout. You can do this by pressing the small pinhole button with something like a paperclip that's on the Ergodox EZ's right half, but putting this key on your layout is a more convenient way of accessing it if you don't happen to have a paperclip handy. All right, and that's it. This has been a tour of the whole default layout, but just as a reminder, nothing here is set in stone. You should feel free and make any changes that you'd like in order to feel more comfortable or to make the keyboard work better for your workflow and your uses. Feel free and email us if you have any questions about this. Cheers, and bye-bye.